Does RAM tuning matter on Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs? Well, yes and no. That bad boy in the background is my personal computer and it has a DDR5 6400 Kingston memory kit and it's a great kit overall. Today we'll be comparing DDR5 4800 completely untuned versus DDR5 6200 fully tuned. The point of the video is to show exactly what gains there are between completely stock and fully tuned. Before you rush to the comments with your pitchforks to let me know that this is a very stupid comparison, please take a look at the results. What you would have noticed is that a 4800 MHz untuned memory kit is pretty much performing on par with the 6200 MHz tuned memory kit. Now to get a bit technical about why Rainbow Six Siege does not scale at all with RAM frequency and timings, I believe the 7950X3D is able to avoid accessing RAM at all, as the maps and assets are very small within Siege and most likely fit on the 3D cache of the CPU. I do believe that the small decrease in performance you're about to see is as a result of the decreased fabric clock, also known as the FCLK, rather than the actual RAM speeds. With that said, the 4800 MHz kit was less than 1% slower than the 6200 MHz fully tuned kit. So I decided to take another game that I know to be slightly CPU bottlenecked at 1440p, that would be Forza Horizon 5. This game at its core is completely different to Rainbow Six Siege, and yet the results are extremely similar in terms of performance differences. What you'll notice is that the 4800MHz untuned is not that far off the 6200MHz tuned yet again. So, if you are a Ryzen 7000 X3D owner, what does this mean for you? Does it mean that you can just enable XMP and forget about it? Mostly. But there is a scenario where a tuned RAM kit can actually be quite beneficial, and we'll get to that in a second right after the Forza Horizon 5 test. Anyway, the final results ended up being pretty much on par with the Rainbow Six Siege ones, where the 4800MHz untuned kit was yet again less than 1% slower. Now let's move on to Call of Duty where things get interesting. Make sure you keep an eye on my 1% lows. Now what I do want to mention is that the averages were actually higher on the 4800, showing how little it can make a difference in some scenarios, but in some others, it can make quite a big difference as the 1% lows were actually hit quite hard on the 4800 MHz kit within Ashika Island on Call of Duty. But yes, essentially, best case scenario, Call of Duty would require RAM tune to maybe have 30 more FPS in the 1% lows. I did want to clear something up, I don't actually get those crazy high frame rates throughout the entirety of Ashika, it's just on that part of the map, on the edge. I tested there specifically so nobody would kill me while I'm doing the testing. If you guys are interested to watch a full gameplay of Ashika Island where I essentially benchmark the game while I play, make sure to check out my video. This is a small excerpt from it. I essentially scored 313 average FPS with 199 in the lows over a full match of Ashika, and it was a blast. While overclocking your RAM might not provide the most massive gains outside of Call of Duty 1% lows, it would definitely be helpful to do alongside with an Undervolt. Undervolting for Ryzen 7000 X3D is great and will render the highest performance gains out of everything you can do for Ryzen 7000. I recommend you go and watch my video on how to maximize your undervolts if you do want to try that out. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any comments, comment in the comment section and I'll make sure to get to you as quick as I can. Have a good one and enjoy.